Hello, my name is Susan Gregg and I am the founder of Smart Pediatric Therapy. I have a doctorate degree in occupational therapy with a pediatric emphasis. This will be a basic introduction and after this presentation, my hope is that you would gain a better understanding of why children act and behave the way that they do that there are underlying physiological reasons behind the behaviors of children and we can help. Okay, so what is sensory processing? Sometimes it's called sensory integration or SI for short, and it refers to the way that our nervous system receives information from all of our senses. It's our brain's ability to receive, organize, and make sense of a continual flow of information from all of the senses at the same time. This is a continual process that goes on 24 hours a day. Okay, so most people are familiar with the five basic senses. But I'm going to talk about two very important additional senses. The proprioceptive system informs us of our body position in space and its receptors are located primarily in our muscles and joints and relay information on muscle length and tension to our brains. It is the unconscious knowledge of knowing our body position without using our vision. For example, if you were pointing your index finger and you close your eyes and someone were to move just the very tip of your, your index finger up or down. It's your sense of proprioception that tells your brain if your finger is moved in the up or down position, again, without using your vision. So it really is our sense of body awareness. It allows us to know where our joints are positioned, as well as the amount of force against our body and the effort our muscles need to apply at any given time. For example, when we reach for a glass of water, it's our proprioceptive sense that guides the amount of effort our, our muscles need to make so we do not overshoot or undershoot or spill that glass of water. So we rely heavily on this sense throughout the day to keep track of what our bodies are doing. It is necessary for building body awareness and security in how we fit in with our environment. Okay, the second additional sense is our vestibular system which detects movement and gravitational pull and is our sense of balance. Its receptors are located in the inner ear. Our vestibular system provides information regarding the position of our head in space and acceleration and deceleration of movement. It is the first sensory system to develop in utero. The vestibular system has strong neurological connections in the brain and is a major organizer of various sensory input. It is considered the most influential sensory system and it has a tremendous impact on one's ability to function daily. Either directly or indirectly, the vestibular system influences nearly everything we do. It is the unifying system in our brain that modifies and coordinates information received from the other senses, and it functions like a traffic cop, telling each sensation when and where it should go or stop. So the vestibular system primes the entire nervous system to function effectively by sending messages to the higher centers of our brains. The vestibular system affects aspects of physical function like our posture, balance, movement, coordination, attention, arousal or alert level of our nervous system, impulsivity, and behavior. It works with the other systems to give us our perception of space and our position and orientation within that space. It also influences the tiny muscles in our eyes to help um, our eye movements for reading and hand-eye coordination. Sometimes the incoming sensory messages from the environment or from within an individual's body get mixed up. So the message is poorly detected, modulated, or interpreted, which can be observed by a child's behavior. It can be likened to a neurological traffic jam, preventing certain parts of the brain from receiving information needed to interpret incoming sensory information correctly. It occurs within a broad spectrum of severity. 
Sensory processing disorder can affect people in only one sense, for example, just touch or sight or just movement, or in multiple senses. One person with SPD may over-respond to touch sensation and find clothing, physical contact, or other tactile input to be unbearable. Another person might under-respond and show little or no reaction to stimulation, even pain or extreme hot and cold, or just may be really slow to respond to sensations. So again, a child may over-respond or under-respond or have sensory seeking behaviors in one or more of the senses. So I will attempt to break down dysfunction in each individual sense and what that might look like in order to gain a better understanding of why kids behave the way that they do. We will start with the touch or tactile system. What does an over-responsive kid looks lo look like? These kind of kids avoid or dislike messy play. And this is very pronounced in preschoolers. They don't like glue or finger painting, typically. Um, they have a fight or flight response within the child's nervous system. These children are very fearful and anxious, or they could be aggressive. They avoid standing close to their peers, and they may overreact to minor injuries. They can become distressed by clothing or socks, and they may refuse to walk in grass or the sand barefoot, and they may toe walk. On the other end of the spectrum, children may under respond to touch. So these are the kind of kiddos that crave touch and they need to touch everything and everyone. They tend to not be bothered by injuries, cuts or bruises, but not all the time, this can fluctuate. They tend to mouth objects excessively they frequently hurt other children or pets while playing. They enjoy and seek out messy play. They may be self-abusive, even banging their own head. Okay, we'll move on to auditory dysfunction. An over-responsive child may be very fearful of the sound of a flushing toilet, a vacuum cleaner, hair dryer, or a dog barking. They run away, um, they cry a lot, and they may cover their ears. Again, it's a true fight or flight reaction. They may refuse to go to movie theaters or a parade or a concert, anything that they perceive as too loud and too overwhelming. These same kiddos may be distracted by background sounds that others don't even notice, such as the air conditioner or the hum of the fluorescent lights. Okay, under responsive to auditory input. So in my opinion, these are the kids that fall through the cracks and may not be as recognized as much as the over responsive kind of kiddo. So these kids often do not respond when their name is called. They sometimes will make noise for noise sake, like they'll hum or whistle or just make noise to like seek that input. Um, they often need directions to be repeated. They may like excessive loud TV or music. They seem to have trouble understanding or remembering what was said. They appear oblivious at times. These kiddos often miss things going on in their environment and just kind of oblivious. Again, not as overt as some other kids' behaviors. They sometimes will talk themselves through a task out loud. Okay, again, the vestibular system is the powerhouse system and is our sense of balance and it gives us security in our environment. So an over-responsive kiddo, these are the ones that avoid playground equipment and they appear very anxious. They get very fearful when their feet leave the ground or their head is tipped backward or upside down. They tend to have poor balance and they're ten they tend to be clumsy. Um, they may physically cling to an adult they trust. They prefer sedentary tasks. They move slowly and cautiously, and these are not the risk taker type of kiddos. They can appear weak and they slump when sitting in their chair or resting their head in their hand on the table. Okay, so a kid who's under responsive to vestibular input are the kind of kiddos that are in constant motion and they cannot sit still. They crave fast spinning and very intense movement experiences. They're always jumping on the furniture, spinning their body, or hanging upside down. They love to swing as high as possible. 
And instead of walking, they are seen to be running, jumping, and hopping. And these are the risk taker type of kids, and they could also be a safety risk. Again, the proprioceptive system is our body awareness, and it helps us feel secure in our bodies, and it helps us maneuver and function effectively in our environment. So signs of proprioceptive dysfunction could be sensory seeking behaviors like crashing, bumping, climbing, falling, or jumping pretty much constantly in some kids. They love pushing, pulling, and dragging objects. They frequently hit, bump, or push other children. They typically chew on like pencils, straws, shirt, whatever they can get their hands on. And they love to be tightly wrapped in a blanket as it's calming to their nervous system. Proprioceptive dysfunction affects our body awareness and how secure we feel and interact with people and our environment. So these kids that lack body awareness, they're very easily frustrated and they can lack confidence. They use too much or too little force when writing or coloring. They often play too rough with their peers, siblings, or pets. They misjudge the amount of force needed to pick up objects, so they often break objects or toys. So when you combine these dysfunction, it really affects a child socially and emotionally. This list is the hallmark of SPD in young children. They have difficulty getting along with their peers. They're very, very prone to outbursts and tantrums. They're very easily frustrated and cry a lot. They could have aggressive behavior. They have difficulty with changes in routines. They're often impulsive and cannot sit still. Adults have a hard time interpreting the child's cues, needs, or emotions. So the child's behavior appear to not match the situation from an adult's perspective. These kids will melt down over the slightest thing. Okay, so let's talk about what help is available for these families. Very specialized occupational therapy, evaluation, and treatment using a sensory integration frame of reference. So you really, really need to have extensive postgraduate training or mentorship very specialized knowledge, experience, proper equipment, and space. Smart Pediatric Therapy is a one-of-a-kind clinic utilizing evidence-based treatment approaches, and we specialize in the treatment of sensory processing disorder. Please check out our parent video testimonials on our website at smartpediatrictherapy.com. We also have a Facebook page. In conclusion, Current studies suggest that at least one out of 20 children's daily life is affected by sensory processing disorder. So there may be at least one child in the typical classroom setting. I want to reiterate that we all have a very unique nervous system and we may experience some of these symptoms that I have mentioned. For example, we may not like the feel of certain fabrics on our skin, but SPD is much more than that. It affects and interrupts a child's daily living routines, his emotional state, and his typical functioning in everyday life. Early intervention and proper treatment are key because they will not grow out of it. Thank you for this opportunity to share our unique and effective services we provide at Smart Pediatric Therapy. Here is a picture of some of our team members. Smart Pediatric Therapy is located in Goodyear, Arizona, just south of the 10 and Litchfield Road. We take a holistic approach to treating children and we strive to educate and empower families. Again, there is a difference, so please view our parent video testimonials and give us a call today. Thank you for listening to this presentation.